one fading XML file. Uh, I don't think we have gone through what are the XML file, each XML file and all the stuff. But I've shown you in the Ambari how to configure it, uh, how to configure these parameters. Okay, like so. uh, if you are with any of these vendors, obviously you're never going to update the XML files directly, but you always go with the um, vendor supporting software or okay, like you update your configuration file. So that is about the unit two. Okay, like the only handling is showing about the individual XML files. Okay, like that. I, I can also show you on today on that one. Third one, uh, writing MapReduce programs, a weather data set that is just like one type of a publicly available data. Okay, like uh, if you see that how to definitely guide all our examples are based on weather data set. Um, understanding how to PPA for MapReduce framework, old and new. Um, old, um, I'm 100% I'm sure no one is using it. Old. Okay, like, so it's not worth to spend a lot of time on the old MapReduce API, but it's it's not going to help in any way. So we covered most of the things also for the new API. Okay, like and even uh, with the cluster or with the configuration, I don't think that you could. Execute old one, old one. Even new one itself, like I'm getting some problems, but old one, there is no way that we try to execute and I can show you the results. Uh, basic programs of Hadoop map reduce, we already covered. Driver code, we already covered. Mapper, we already covered. Reducer, we already covered. Record reader, okay, like not in B. Combiner, we already covered. Partitioner, uh, I don't think we covered this one. So, unit three, pending things are only record reader and partition, partitioner, okay. Um, the reason I kept these two things is because unless you see the example, I don't think it will be easy okay, like to understand that one. That is about unit three. Unit four, of course, I have not covered all these things. Okay, like, uh, let's move to the unit five. Uh, peak, not yet started. And unit six, applying structure to the Hadoop data with high. Uh, saying follow to high, seeing how the high is put together. Getting started with high, examining the high clients, working with high data types, creating and managing database and tables, seeing how the high data manipulation language works, curing, analyzing data. We covered everything from unit six. I mean, we covered more than that. What are the topics that we have listed? Uh, combiner is not covered, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, We'll take an example even on the combiner part as well. Okay, let's say uh, combiner. Uh, there is nothing called like a combiner for the map reduce. So you could set your reducer class as a combiner class. Okay, like um, whatever the reducer class that you are putting on, I mean, you are setting that one set reducer class. So you could also use the same class, uh, same class name for a combiner. You could uh, so like set combiner class and then use the reducer class in there. Combiner, what it does is, um, I can maybe uh, in the map reduce life cycle. Okay, like so, if you want to start the reduce phase, you need to wait until all the mappers got complete. Then only the mapper's output would be passed to the reducer, and then the reducer will be kicked off. So if there are like for any uh, for some application or some job, let's say like 200 mappers got invoked, and 200 maps would be running on the cluster, and there are only two reducers. So all these two reducers, they will wait until the 200 mappers got complete. So suppose if you have a maximum of 20. Uh, the containers are available in your cluster. So to run the 200 mappers, it requires 10 cycles. Okay, right? So it will wait until that time. Uh, that is the regular process. Uh, if you add your reducer class to the combiner, what it does is, whenever the mapper got complete, it invokes the combiner, and then it does the uh, Computation or whatever the aggregation method that will define your reducer class that will be applicable on the mapper output itself. Okay, like so 
instead of passing the mapper output directly to the reducer the reducer function will be called on the mapper output there itself wherever the mapper got executed there itself the reducer function will be called for example the word count so in the word count in the mapper stage we are just emitting word and then value as one word one word one like that right and in the reducer side we are combining all the words uh, for each unique word we have been summing up their value since we are passing the value as only one 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 so if the same word occurred three times that means one plus one plus one so we are summing up the value okay like because the value will be always one for each word so when you are summing up it will give you the exact frequency of the word how many times that word has been occurred so technically you could call your reducer function once the mapper got complete so you need not wait until all the mappers got complete and then pass all these words to the reducer so at the mapper stage itself once the mapper got completed you could call the reduce function so within that mapper output it will give the word and then corresponding counts and then finally this output will be passed to the reducer so that's what the red combiner would do again not all the methods would be applicable at the combiner some is a relative one exactly like so some is a relative word some is a what do you call transitive something i don't know what you call, what is the property that you could call it's like um uh, in the mathematical terms you could say like uh, a plus b plus c is always equal into a plus b plus c okay and um, i forgot i forgot the word exactly like uh, it's been very um, very long time that i st- so a plus b plus c equal to a plus b plus c so in a typically in a map reduce um, life cycle without using the combiner what it does is a is a, output from one of the mapper b is output from one of the mapper and c is the output of one of the mapper so what we are doing is the uh, summing operation you always do that you could combine some of this number and with that result you could combine the rest of the still you get the same right? because sum is uh, i don't know what do, what is the property that you called it is transitive if i remember correctly something like that right so sum is a uh, uh, A mathematical function, okay, like which you could use like that. Okay. In other words, I will take another one, average. Okay, like so, average of ten numbers is not equal to average of three. Um, average of four average of the rest of the three numbers and then average of all these three so you cannot apply average at the individual elements so this will not be equal average of 10 numbers so to calculate the average you need to apply on the entire site you cannot apply the same uh, same function on subset of data and then you produce you apply the uh, you apply the function again on the subset of data result of subset of data okay like you cannot do that part so that's it so combiner would be uh, would be useful when your reducer has this kind of a functions like sum like that when your reducer is doing some average uh-huh. even though you give your uh, even though you give your combiner class that will not give you uh, you should not give a combiner if your reducer function is type of average because it will not give you the right result some are count okay like uh, like this whatever it is like so select so these are the things you could do suppose i am saying like i am selecting all the data so you are selecting all the data from all the ones or you select the data from subset you select the data from subset and you select the data from the results of the subsets will give you the same result okay like that. so that kind of option that kind of a functions you could use a combiner that is the advantage of having a combiner uh okay combiner will be useful 
whenever your mapper got completed and sorry whenever some of the mappers got completed and reducer is waiting for the completion of the rest of the mappers in that case only combiner would be useful so but for some jobs it required only four mappers and i do have 40 resources are available um, always i mean at the time and so four mappers will run at the parallelly so you will not see any advantage or any um, uh, instance of calling the combiner at all so even though you said combiner there is no guarantee that it will be called so sometimes depending on the situation um, framework would try to call the combiner if it's been defined so even though if it is defined there is no guarantee that your combiner will always be called okay that's about the combiner so, uh, is it clear <laughs> otherwise i will repeat one more time or maybe it's been it's been a very long time that we discussed on map reviews so you guys have forget about that I think only Jain to you, uh, Jain to you, Vijayanagaram is the only people like who logged in today. Okay. Um, that's about the that's about the combiner uh, configuration file. Okay, like I will show you shortly about the. Uh, configuring XML files, what is the uh, um, XML files, and how you decode the XML files, and like that. Next one today, uh, I will come back on this all the all the topics. Don't worry. I mean, like so, MapReduce is anyway, we do have a good amount of time. Uh, unit three and unit four, I would like to cover in both in full. Okay, like so, we'll take around four to five weeks. Okay, like to complete three and four. Okay, like and then. Uh, we have uh, then we have only the peak one or else uh, since the next week is um, a midterm i already covered unit two unit three as well okay like so unit one two three i think you would be you would be good good for your mid uh, good for your midterm exam um, then we'll spend like two to three weeks on the peak and then the rest of all our time will be going into the market I want to complete even this one too. Okay, like so. Peak. Let's say like two weeks or three. Sorry, two classes or three classes on the peak. I think that would be enough, really, because um, in the syllabus, peak is really a little bit. It will take more time, but uh, luckily, a syllabus does not have much other things. So, peak architecture, going with peak Latin application flow, working through ABCs of peak Latin, evaluating local distributed modes of running peak script, checking out the peak script interfaces. Scripting with Pig Latin. So the scripting with Pig Latin is the bigger topic. Okay, like typically it will take a, a two classes or three classes, and rest of all the things will take only one class. Okay, like so explainable. Um, I'm thinking okay, like four classes, three to four classes would be more than enough for Pig. Okay, like to cover everything, um, at least to make you comfortable in writing for the Pig scripts on your own, and then rest of, rest of the time then. You Use it on three and four. Okay, and still, if you have some more time, okay, like I will try to cover some other topics beyond your syllabus as well. Okay. Uh, XML and also, I think um, J2 people. Um, you asked me about yarn. Okay, like I will try to cover the yarn as well. Okay, like so. Oh yeah, associate you. Correct. Very good. Uh, sorry, I forgot on that word. Yeah, this property is called like associated. That's good. Okay, thanks for reminding. Thanks for reminding on that. Yeah, any any function of type or nature of associative. So you, for that kind of a function, you could define go ahead and then use the same thing as the combiner. Anything other than associative, don't do the command one. And if you do, it will give you, it will produce the wrong results. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Are any questions on the high? Are you, are you comfortable in the high? Hello, sir. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Uh, sir, can you cover that uh, JSON part, sir, again? Oh, JSON. I mean, I, JSON is not working, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, I did not get a chance to look on that one further. Yes. Um, we'll do that one too. And also, sir, in the, in the last class, uh, some of the participants were asking about what software that you are using. Actually, uh, they might not have heard about the Ambari, sir. Actually, uh, they might be asking about you to uh, install Ambari, how, uh, explaining the steps, how to install Ambari. And through Ambari, uh, how you install that hot on works, I think they might be asking about that, sir. Yeah, I think we already covered that, right? What is Ambari, what is hot on works? Okay, otherwise I will repeat one more time today. Um, How to install that, that part is, I think, something. Um, installation, it's not, installation, you are not going to learn, it's going really to show you that. Okay, like so. Installation, when you learn the installation, when you do installation on your own, that is the only way. Like so. Even though I show you, if you have the recording and all that stuff, I don't think you will install. Trust me. But anyway, um, I will explain you a high level, okay, like how to install um, hot on Works cluster or how to install Cloud Era cluster and all that stuff. But, like entire the Hadoop software is open source. So to use Hadoop software, we need that. Start about having the platform, okay, like you do some uh, magic using the Hadoop. It required all other ecosystem tools. So, like Hive, Peak, okay, like Fuzi, okay, like Spark, MapReduce, Yarn. So, all these things will be required, okay, like so after installing the platform. So, if you want to install all these ones, you need to see that like which version is compatible with which version of platform. Suppose I have the platform, like hit uh, Hadoop. Uh, 2.6, okay, and then I need to see that for oh, which version of high is compatible. Okay. Then which version of pig is installed on that one? So after some after a month or like that, so there will be a new high version will be there. So you need to get that new high version and get it installed on that. Of course, you need to see the compatibility and all that stuff, okay, like how to match uh, and how to install. Uh, uh, perfectly in the that point all your things into the newer version, which is not a great rocket science there, but it's a little bit challenging. Okay, like you need to maintain which version, which Java it is using, which libraries that they have been using, are there any clashes? With the common library that these students have been using. So, Hadoop is not just one tool, Hadoop is combinations of several tools, eight, 10, 12. But okay, in our syllabus, we are not going to cover everything. We are going to learn five, big, more than. I mean, people would be using all this. So, manage all this little bit. It's not a problem. 
the schedule cloud. Next one, if you want to add more computer I want to add like two more data nodes. I want to add four more data nodes. I want to make uh, my resource manager as a high available. Node is down. Okay. Uh, how it will? How I know that my name is down? How I know that it is not responsible? So this managing Hadoop software and all the demands of the Hadoop software. Uh, and third as once you have the data into the system, and suppose you have created a high tables, you have written some fixed scripts, and you have been executing how can I see this data? Like security. Security plays a very, very important role, typically in organizations. Okay. And I cannot give a read access or write access to everyone in the organization, right? So Open source Hadoop software does not have any code written to handle the security. So it's just like a plain of the Hadoop software. If you meant to open for all the all the users or all the, everybody really. There won't be any user concept at all. I mean, like a end user concept at all in the Hadoop. So all the users got every all the kind of thing. Uh, in our nation, definitely that's not going to work. So, these vendors, some of the vendors, they built a, some software uh, which would address all the challenges that we discussed. Managing the software versions, managing the all the tools, installing a new services, New versions, okay. Like managing the cluster, adding the nodes, removing the nodes, okay. Like what uh, one from one node to another node, okay. Like that, and adding security layer for your data, or adding security in and out of the Hadoop platform. So to address all these challenges, these vendors they build some software, their own software, okay. Like of course. Uh, not every one of them has open source, okay, like so, but some components they have been open source and some of them are not even open source their tools. So one of the vendor is called like Hot Works, another vendor is called like Cloudera. Uh, they do have Hot Works is one of the vendor, another vendor is Cloudera, another vendor is Mapart. There are like more than 20 vendors used to have until three years back, okay, like, uh, but now only these three are the these three vendors remain, and the rest of everyone has gone out of from the market, whatever may be the reasons. So these three are the uh, ninety five percent of the market has been captured by all these three vendors. Again, out of these vendors, Cloudera has. Larger client space, Hardenworks has second place, Mapper has third place, okay, in terms of occupancy. Okay. So, the managing software that Hardenworks has been built is called like Ambari. The managing software. Also, I think from the number the name exactly. Okay, like so, but something related to that. So, uh, typically the people in the cloud era, okay, like they say cloud era or cloud era manager. Okay, like so, uh, CDM is also they call it cloud era manager. Um, this cloud era manager, um, they build some nice GUI. Okay, like so, of course, number is also GUI, cloud era manager is also GUI. But, Cloudera manager is not open source, so that's where that Cloudera proprietary. Okay, like so it will be executable. Okay. You will not be uh, getting any code or anything like that. So some of the components in Cloudera tools are not open source. They are uh, built in Cloudera organization, so they are not open source any of their technologies. 
whereas cotton works their concept is since they are using the open source software so they would like to contribute to open source so unless it is not open source they are not going to take it so that means everything in the cotton works suit is open source including ambari okay so if you are getting your hadoop distribution from cotton works that will have ambari hadoop platform i base okay like uzi mapreduce ya kafka spark uh, fal uh, uh, storm okay like flu um, all the stuff okay like so all the stuff will be available So Ambari is a GUI software that like, could help you to okay, like to manage all these individual things, and also you could apply some uh, security la security layers, and you could create some users, you could create some groups, you could control the access permission, and lot of other stuff that you could do using Ambari. Similarly, even Tordera Manager also has that kind of features, or okay, like you could also do that kind of thing. Some of the tools. In our lab, we are using Apache Hadoop, sir. Okay, that's good to know that you are using Hadoop, Apache Hadoop. Again, I rather said it's not difficult to install Apache Hadoop. So all these vendors, they will not provide you software as free. They will provide you uh, their software is not free. Okay, like so, uh, like for example, Cloudera Manager is not free. Ambari. Ambari is free because Hadoop works everything is free only. Okay, like so. But they charge for the support. Okay, like so. What are the uh, and if you have some issue with the uh, high, okay. So you thought about like we got the JSON problem, right? So if you have a Hadoop works cluster, you can contact Hadoop works and you could tell them like why software is not working for them. They would be helping out. They will help out. Problem that you had, and also if possible, they will give a patch as well. So all the high speed Hadoop is open source software. So you will see developers from Hadoop, from Cloudera, from Napa, or even from other organizations as well. Since it's open source, anybody can contribute. Even if you want, you could write your code. You could write that. Uh, you could see there is something gap in that one, or else like uh, if you join in their uh, community uh, community development forum or group, then you will know that like what. What they discuss in and what features that they want to bring to the store, and then you can contribute if you know that, and if you know how to code. Again, entire the Hadoop platform is built in Java, so if you know the Java, then you can contribute directly. Again, only thing is for open source software, no one would pay you. That is only the difference. No one will pay you anything or the for the work that you do. Okay. So for each, all these tools, both or even all three organizations have some of the committees. The committees are the one like who will be contributing to the open source software. So almost all, all all companies have some committees in their area in that in that field. Otherwise, they would otherwise they will not support. They will not able to support that field. Okay, like so these these vendors they will provide the tools. Okay. Um, last time, what was the thing that I showed you? Of course, on top of that, we installed Apache Hadoop. Of course, uh, uh, I, I can also install that Apache Hadoop. It's not a, it's not. A, I mean, frankly speaking, it's very easy to install Apache Hadoop than this vendor software. Install, because Apache Hadoop does not require anything. You just simply download the tool and then you could execute that one and then you run the your D1 and then that's it. It will start over. It's very very easy to install Apache Hadoop cluster, but manage is not an easy. Man, you you cannot manage just Apache Hadoop cluster. You could do that if you don't want to upgrade, if you don't want to do any modifications, if you don't want to see that and like that. And also, this Ambari and Cloudera manager, this tool has some of the alerting mechanisms. Okay, like like. Uh, whenever the data node goes down, or whenever the name node goes down, and it will alert you, it will alert the people by sending an email, by sending a text message, 
or by not some there are whatever the notification mechanism you could offer so you have that provision these tools will provide all that kind of a thing okay um that is the that, that is about amari i'm not sure why i'm not able to start this one let me restart one more time okay um uh, install of the ambari install of cloud air manager as i said like if you don't if you download your hadoop distribution software from hartonworks that will come automatically with ambari okay if you download your hadoop distribution from cloudera so you will get cloudera manager automatically okay so first 30 days or 45 days there will be a free then after that and this uh, this vendors i know they even the costing and everything so they, they will charge you based on no so they have that you know no then you could extend that like uh, for these people so suppose if your high is down and if you couldn't if you um, if you're not able to uh, fix that one or anything anything that happened then you can contact the hardware person and then they will fix it for you okay this is the open source software that means you will see a lot of surprises okay like so um it's not a uh, it may be well written code or it may be well tested code but integration okay like and then uh, when you really use the software uh, it may work or it may not be it may not work like our json thing. so it's all syntax Technically everything is correct, but still we could not able to uh, extract the JSON individual elements by, by using high. So that is one of the examples. So that is open source world. And the JSON object I already used it even uh, in in past. So whatever the use. That might be different than whatever the thing that we tried. So, uh, in between, there may find our variance. Okay, like, so this kind of a surprise you always see in this open source world. So, like three months back, if it works, so there is no guarantee that it will work now. And uh, from the, the uh, next release on one, the entire your Hadoop platform is built on. So they are not going to support Java Saran. Okay, like, so there is a, another bigger change is been happening in the Hadoop world. So people are all, as of now, like everything, even if you're Java 7, if your applications are using Java 6 or anything, it has all the backward compatible. Even Java 8 is also backward compatible with 7 and all the stuff. But if you have some libraries with 1.7, that cannot work in 1.8. Okay, like, so you need to upgrade your thing or you need to do some um, modifications or like, like that. Okay, like, so that kind of a challenge will always be there. And upgrade of Java, that is a bigger thing. Upgrade of service, upgrade of Java. If you want to upgrade Java from one version to another version, that's another 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 interesting thing. So these are all like problems, okay, like that the managing side. So uh, typically Hadoop admins they will be using this Ambari tool a lot, okay, like the employer and manager, okay, because it's mainly targeted for Hadoop admins. Uh, developers, uh, very few scenarios okay, like they use the Ambari, okay, like not in a daily, day to day activities. Okay. Uh, yeah. Since installation is not part of our server, so I'm not going to cover a lot of the installation stuff here. And also, installation, uh, uh, unless you have a Computers in front of you. I don't think even uh, it's a good idea or okay, like to go for the installation class. It's not about uh, yeah. Another uh, there's about Ambari order manager and everything. Configuration files. Okay.
Um, HDFS, right? So we know the demons in demons that is part of the code. What is one is and there will be a segment. The part is about the HDFS service. So typically for all the services, those are like HDFS, YARN service, high user service, uh, I'll tell you about the PG as well. And we will see the service. All the services are the main configuration file will be so in case if it is a HDFS, it will be HDFS site.xml. This is a configuration that the HDFS will be stored. If it is high, okay, like it will be site.xml. Okay. Uh, for all these services, there is something called like a core site.xml. So this is the main core for the entire Hadoop platform. Okay. So, so we'll see that where is this core site.xml. And then from there, I will show you the address. Uh, don't know if That's good. So this is the place. Go outside that at some Related to the Hadoop platform code will be stored in the code side data channel. So this is the main file, I can say this is the heart of the Hadoop platform. So there are a lot of parameters which will be interesting okay, like in this XML file. Um, all these demons are entered the platform has configuration files for the XML. Um, from Hadoop 3, I don't know we are using Hadoop 2.8, okay, like um, so from three onwards, they are going they are going to change this one. So configuration files will not be in XML. Um, there is some initiation on the open source community move it from XML to some other formats. I don't know what is the format as well. I think it's in JSON, I guess. JSON or some other format they are moving from XML to JSON. But there is some community they want to keep XML files itself. So there is some discussions are going on. I'm not sure to which direction that people would be inclined to, uh, but anyway, uh, as of now, okay, like, and for this, until the end of this year, all the kind of configuration files will be in XML format on their own. Okay. Uh, the first, you will see this one, the, uh, all the configuration files will start with the configuration and then end with the configuration tag. And it will be on this. If you start with the property and with property tag, each property has, has name, value, and its type. So here it says there's final. I'll explain you what the final value. So property, each configuration parameter is enclosed in this property tag. And the, what is the name of the configuration? And what is the value that currently? And what is the type of that one? So this final, this final tag is optional for so some configurations. You will see this final and some configurations of okay, like this final tag will not be there at all. For example, this one. You see this? This one does not have the final tag. So it's like that. Property in the property wise, 
I mean, I could say it's key value pair, but exactly not the key value pair. Okay, I like it. It has a name, value, and then final. Okay. Uh, name of the configuration, value of the configuration, and final, what it does is, the final is set as a true, that means um, we cannot modify this one after starting your cluster. So once you start the cluster, you can modify all the final variables. All the final configuration variables. But the rest of the things you could modify even with after the starting of the cluster survey. Some configurations may require to restart the D1, but if it, even if it is final, okay, like uh, they are not supposed to be editable. So since it is a file, I do have the right access, and if I have my Apache Hadoop cluster, I will go there and then I modify it without knowing. So what happened is your cluster will become useless. You are not able to access any of the uh, cluster data or the like when you try to attempt a final configuration variable. But in case Hardenworks, Ambari, or Cloudera, Cloudera Manager, if you try to attempt this configuration variable, the GUI will not allow you to update them at all. So it will be just grayed out. Or else it will give you a serious warning by saying that like, are, you, know, are you, you want to sure you want to modify this variable so that like your entire cluster data that you are going to lose some kind of a that like that, some warning messages that it will be found. Okay, so that is the advantage of having the vendor software. Okay, uh, next one. So here fs dot default fs. Okay, um, and don't ask me why they named these variables like that. Um, maybe initially they might have started with something and then people might have added or modified or extended that meaning and all that stuff. But don't go with that one, why the name has been defined like that. But as a, a purpose of that variable, it's called like a default file system. Okay. Then why fs dot? Because this indicates that this variable is related to the file system. Okay, um, HDFS, and then here this is the uh, this is the file system name. Okay, like so, you could give it name like my my HTTP cluster, uh, whatever the name of your cluster you can give that. But uh, this is a sandbox provided with a hard there, so they will give them this. So your HDFS part starts from here. So HDFS colon slash slash, and this is the root. Sandbox.hardenverse.com and 8020 is the port number where your name node is going to be That is the meaning of this variable. Next one, fs.trash interval. So it will tell you this configuration is related to the file system. And the next one will tell you is related to something related to the trash. And third one will give you, oh, this is related to the interval. Many of them are like just self explanatory and you could read them and then you could know that. So this next one is HA file over controller active standby character GK OP retry. So I could read HA means high availability of file over controller active standby character. So this variable will indicate how Zookeeper retries to get the to elect the active one from using standby name also. so that is the meaning of that anyway i mean um uh, don't think too much even if you follow or if you're not following but each configuration has some meaning related to that functionality and then you, you have the values there okay suppose if you want suppose like here uh, if you, um dirty and quickly what I could do is I don't want to. Um, I think I can have a less here. Yeah. So trash interval, it looked like 360. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a 360 seconds or minute. 360 minutes, one hour is the trash interval. Okay. So I want to change it to from 360 to 480. So you could go ahead and then you could do that. And then you want to save this one. Then from that time onwards, I would, maybe you need to restart your uh, um, uh, name node D1 or data node D1. Okay, let it reflect this one. 
uh, otherwise you will be good some parameters you don't require to recharge some parameters you require to recharge so to know that it's very hard okay to go and use this xml file so uh, you cannot able to figure out but you need to have that knowledge oh, oh i changed the trash interval so now maybe i require name name or uh, restart something like that like, that is a challenge when you go to the hadoop uh, apache hadoop directly like this so this is the core side uh, i'll go to that what are the configuration parameters only core is a very important default actor Next one is HDFS side. Okay. So HDFS side, we have all other very simple. So DFS dot block size. Exactly what is set at the cluster level. So this will be the one twenty eight MB. One way, like you, you could see that, like what is the file? Sorry, what is the block size of a cluster? That is one thing. Another one, okay, like if you want to see um, uh, which ports the data node data node has been listening to. What is the balance? Uh, what is like that? I mean, I don't want to read everything. So there are a lot of parameters. There is another one, DFS that data node that data that directory. So you could read out. It, this configuration is related to the DFS. Of course, it's also related to HDFS or DFS data node data directories. So where the data node is storing your data. That's what it means. As of now, I it has only one directory. But in technically, in the reality, you will have a lot of directories. So, how many uh, disk partitions that your system has, that number of uh, values that you could provide. That is about data. Where the data node will store your real data blocks in blocks. Right? So, this is the directory. Like that, one by one by one by one. Okay. Um, similarly, uh, where I am. Okay. Uh, if you go to high high config, okay, like this, you can see that high side. Okay. Here, related to the high. Um, let's go to yeah. We know that like the high will store all metadata in the meta store. So you could see that what is the meta store type, whether it is a MySQL, Oracle, or Derby. Okay, like so, what kind of a meta store that we have been using? So here, this this driver will tell you exactly what type of database that has been configured as high meta store here. MySQL, so it will give you the MySQL, and in this connection URL is where the MySQL has been located. So, of course, it is located on the same box here, and their connection username is called like root. Okay, like what is the password? Also, it is there. Okay. Hive Metastore user password is Hive. Okay, like this. This is related to the Hive. Okay, so what are the parameters required for Hive? That is very one XML. Um, similarly, Uji has its own thing. Okay, like so. Pig does not have any of the site data XML. I can explain that one why Pig does not require any of the parameters. Why Pig does not have any of the site data XML. Okay, 
whenever we read whenever we are uh, discussing about the peak at the time i will explain you in detail about that one um it's just even though syllabus has just xmls but it's not only just like xmls there will be a um, what do you call it environmental shell file for each of the surveys okay like so uh, again that will be uh, mainly for admins but i can give you a little bit overview on that okay you could see that like this there is a hadoop environment uh, shell script map reduce environment shell yarn environment shell uh, kms is a knowledge management service Okay, like in hardness cluster, but anyway, uh, we'll see this one also. Like sometimes you may need to tweak the parameters inside this shell as well. So this shell will be used before uh, before starting your daemon. Okay, like so these are the ones. Uh, if you end up using different Java path, okay, like you need to come and change the Java home and like these parameters, what are the what are the parameters that it has been set? So Hadoop form is one. Okay, like so. When you install using Apache Hadoop, so probably you may need to set or you may need to make sure that export form or Hadoop form variable has been set properly. Hadoop heap size, Hadoop name, not initial thing, Hadoop OPTS, okay, like these are the Hadoop options. So these are the options which will be appended to your Demons. So whenever you are starting the demon, so it uses all these parameters and then happens to the outcome. And also here you see that job tracker options, task tracker options, name node options, um, data node options. Okay. So this is also one of the parameters. People would tweak this file as well. So this this shell file is also important. Exactly. In, I mean, when I say in terms of the configuration and all the stuff. So similarly, even for yarn, yarn also there is a yarn site and there is a yarn environment. Mapred also mapred site, mapred uh, environment data set. Um, core site data XML, HDFS site data XML are very very important for platform. And high has high site data XML, high environment data set. Even the uh, for for HDFS, there is no HDFS environment, but it has Hadoop environment. That is about configuration files. I mean, we could go through each of the parameters of the configuration, but it's not worth. It. Okay, like so, uh, I can also show you Ambari how it look like. The same parameters. Okay. So the, uh, another one is about the reporting. The report. So Ambari produces. Nice reports on the cluster side. So you could see that how much disk space has been available in HDFS. So if you have just Apache Hadoop cluster, you will not be having these kind of features directly. Go manually and then check that out. Yeah, for lot you could use it, but for typically on the productionizing system. So on the left hand side you could see all the services here. Okay, like so I base, peak, scoop, scoop, So managing all these individual tools is really a challenge, not an easy okay. uh, creation. So click on the HDFS okay, and then go to the config tab.
so uh, we could also search here. Let me see that what is the default text that we saw that one. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. FS dot default FS. So this is what like this value is the one like which we saw in the configuration file that core side data XML. So this is the one. So if it is in GUI, okay, it's like this. Go and then and update this variable. Okay, like we'll update that configuration file. Also, when you change this, and here you could see this lock lock symbol. That means it is a final. So if there is no lock symbol, that means you could change this value. So the GUI really will facilitate, okay, like so, uh, will facilitate these kind of a cosmetic things, okay, so that it will be easy for the uh, admin or even developer. Like that. And if it is a high, okay, so I go to the high part and then like, Like this. Okay. Um, that's about the configuration. BBC EC, uh, please contact Chakravarti Garu if you are not able to hear my voice. I'm not sure. Are you able to hear me still? No? BBC EC, are you going to hear me? That is for the Ambari XML files. We thought about to cover something. Let's have a quick overview on the yarn. So since we have some more time, uh, let me finish this yarn. Uh, yarn is a processing framework on the on the HDF on the Hadoop platform. So yarn stands for eight another resource negotiator. That is a short form for that. And before the yarn, okay, like we used to have a job tracker and task tracker. So these two are the demons which should which should handle all your processing processing part of Hadoop. Uh, there are some problems with the job tracker and uh, task tracker architecture, and job tracker is very very uh, um, uh, it used to be it used to be happen like very very overloaded. So people and also it's 
not going to be scalable beyond the mapper juice okay like so you could run only either mapper program or reducer program in the in the in the, in the job tracker or task tracker so it's not able to uh, process anything other than mapper juice so they thought about like you know we need to have another another resource another resource manager or another resource negotiator and then they named it as yam okay that they would have come with some nice name but they did not get the run so they named it the yam itself okay that is the uh, uh, story behind the word yam so it just replaces the old job tracker and task tracker one and there won't be any Uh, earlier in the job tracker and task tracker world, so there will be some dedicated mappers and reducers. So in each node, we will dedicate like 20% for the reducer, 20, 80% of the mappers. So what would happen is, um, in reality, if you don't require 20% of the reducers, then you will be wasting a lot of resources just to be ideal. Uh, so combined, they want to make it as just container. So in the, inside the container, it can run either mapper or reducer. So earlier, it's not like that. Earlier, it's just like a mapper and reducer. So if, you, if that uh, container is allocated for mappers, it will run only the mapper part. And if some containers are dedicated for reducer, it will run only for the reducer part, like that. So that is also another modification that they made in YARN. In YARN, there is nothing called like a, a dedicated mappers or dedicated reducer. So it's everything called a container. Um, um, in, the, in the distributed, okay, like then the Hadoop platform, when it involves multiple nodes, so each node will have a, a, a here the resources means it's the memory and cores, CPU cores. So when I'm submitting my, any application or any job, so depending on the needs, it will allocate that number of resources so how much memory is required to process each job or how many cores will be required to process each job so that is called like resources and um, yan has very nice resource negotiator like how to handle all, all these resources and all the stuff okay. so here in the uh, in this in this uh, uh, in this diagram okay like you could easily see entire the hdfs entire the hdfs file system a yarn is on top of HDFS, and all the applications are all the, all your uh, uh, any type of application. It needn't be just MapReduce. So here it will support the batch wise MapReduce jobs. It will support some interactive page jobs. It will support some HBase operations, and it will support some streaming streaming jobs. It will it will support some graph based applications. It will support from uh, API, open memory, and Spark related application, any such based applications like that. So, with the by the invention of YARN, it was opened Hadoop platform for different kind of applications. It need not be just mapper, it need not be just map reduce. So you could run any different kind of application. So, uh, uh, with the YARN only, Spark was able to add it into a Hadoop platform. Without YARN, I don't think like the Spark has been integrated with Hadoop platform at all. Of course, with the integration of Hadoop, Spark has become very, very famous. Like that. Okay, that is the advantage. Um, it's much more a generic way of allocating the resources and everything, rather than based on the type of application. So, what are the demons related to the YARN? Okay, like so, um, there are two major demons. One is called like a resource manager and another one is called like a node manager. Resource manager, the purpose of the resource manager will be started in one of the master nodes. Okay, like in node manager, uh, all the node managers will be there in the data nodes. So data nodes have data node daemon and node manager daemon. And data node daemon will handle about all your storage of the data. And node manager daemon will be handling about all processing of your jobs. And resource manager, uh, uh, will handle about all the resources 
allocation of the resources or managing the resources. So uh, whenever and how it will allocate the resources. So what is the algorithm or what is the uh, uh, guidelines that will follow while allocating the resources. So that will be called it as, that will be the rules and everything will be included as part of the scheduler, which is which is called like a capacity scheduler or paid scheduler. Uh, this kind of a, uh, these two terms are the very commonly used in the industry. So Hortonworks recommends capacity scheduler and the Cloudera recommends paid scheduler. So uh, like capacity scheduler means um, we have 10 different applications and which will be accessing, which will be requesting the data. So how you will allocate your resources to these 10 applications? So that guidelines will be given as part of your scheduler. Okay, like in the capacity scheduler, they will be called like a capacity scheduler.xml, basically, and then there you will list down all the rules and everything. Okay. Um, nowadays, even uh, earlier, there are a lot of differences between these two, but nowadays there won't be any difference. So all the possible combination that capacity scheduler has, you could also implement using pair scheduler. And all the combination that the should develop support, you can also define in the capacity schedule. Okay, it's like that. Um, fair schedule means like uh, whoever runs a job, they will get some minimum share. Okay, like so. If there are hundred users, uh, typically they will all be allocated with one one container, and then if they at least they could start some job like that. Okay, like that. capacity schedule means uh, depending on the priority and depending on the request if i'm uh, if i'm requesting like 60 uh, 60 containers and there is a small application requesting only two containers then depending on the also uh, so here has a feature called defining the queues, hierarchical, hierarchical queues. So you could say uh, production jobs versus job versus research jobs like that. So if I'm submitting some query related to my research, that will get least priority. And if I'm submitting a job a query related to my production job, that will get prioritized and more resources will be allocated to that. Okay, like unless that is unless there is no production job, then jobs will be given. People jobs are high priority, and of course, you need to allocate the resources for them. Uh, next level is CTO, next level is the uh, uh, manager, next level is the tech lead, next level is the developer, like that, based on the user names or user IDs, like that. Next one is the node manager. Um, before I go with the node manager, let me talk about container first. What is container? A container is an atomic, um, atomic quantity, atomic level, uh, which will be called as a certain amount of memory and CPU, okay? So a container is nothing but like you could say like four gig of memory with one core. So that is a container. That is the atomic level that any container will have. Suppose my system has, uh, we took the example as four GB plus one core is called like one container. Of course, this is all configurable. I'm not saying that this is the only type of content. This is for example. And my system, like I have 10 data nodes. And whereas each data node has um, 256 gig RAM and 32 core. Okay, 
This is my configuration. So totally I have so including all the ten data nodes inside how two thousand five sixty software. So configured only four G. Containers that I may have. How many containers that I ha I will have here? Anybody? You can have only 32 containers because the cores are 32. Yep. So if you make if you make as I mean sometimes what would happen is okay so even core we could also make it as an optional. So if RTP is available, then we'll allocate a core. Otherwise, we'll not allocate a core. I mean, core. Why it will be optional? Because uh, whenever you can, whenever you have some Unix system, cores are always extensible to the virtual ones. So one core will be shared between two processes like that. So it will be treated as two cores. Uh, it's called like a virtual cores. So they will try to add more virtual, more virtual cores. They'll say real. Thirty-two cores are real, and it can be extendable up, extended up to two fifty-six cores like that. Okay, so I mean, even reality will be 32 cores physical only, but which will be equivalent to 256 cores virtual cores. So, whenever you see some of the system configuration, okay, like you could also see like that. So, we could uh, here one core, I could say like one virtual core here just to make our uh, still is wrong, right. Uh, so, 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 so. Uh, let's take sixty four. Sixty four multiplied by four. And since I have ten data nodes, we'll have six for the container. That means technically six party mappers I could run at the same time. So all the six foot six party containers will be managed by the resource manager. So here the here the resource resource is nothing but your containers. Okay, like so the container is the main resource. So that will be managed by the resource manager. Okay. So whenever you are submitting an application, so you could say that oh I'm submitting some my application like uh, uh, my first map reduce application which requires four containers then it will give a resource manager will allocate the four containers depending on which system that it has uh, wherever it's applicable wherever it's available okay like and then resource manager will say that oh node number two has one container node number five has two containers node number ten has one more container so total four containers will be allocated for your application like that Okay, so that's about the container, and then we'll come back here on the node manager. So, node manager, what it does is it will manage the life cycle of a container. So, once you have the container and um, uh, what do you call starting of the container, okay, like and then cleaning of the uh, container and monitoring the job in the container, okay, like so if it, if it failed or what would happen and the like that kind of a thing, okay, like so. And periodically, it will communicate with the resource manager. So the life cycle of the container will be handled at the node manager level, and it will communicate with the resource manager on the status of the status of the task which performed at the container container level. Okay. The next 
B1 is called like application master. Uh, typically in the in job tracker world, there is no D1 called application master. Okay, like because it's not, it's not required. Uh, so there is only job tracker and task tracker. So the functionality of the job tracker has been divided into two D1. One is called like resource manager. Another one is task tracker will be uh, started in one of the containers and it will be having one per application. So if it is a MapReduce application, then you have one application master. If you have a Spark application, there will be a Spark application master. Okay, like if it is a HBase, HBase related job, there will be a HBase application master. And if it is a stage, there will be a stage application master. Like, so, since yarn okay will allow you to process different applications so here you can see that this all different kind of applications so yarn first what it does is it will try to invoke the application master related related to that application and then process your application related job so either it can be a mapper or a user it can be a related it can be graph related or whatever the type of job so it need not be just only the map review, also like it can be any type of application that you could run on the Hadoop cluster, any distributor. Here. And application master also runs in one of the containers. I do have the very clear flow, okay, like it uh, uh, will be very much clear. And application master then requests Um, I'll go to that one for the next flow. How the flow would happen? So this is the diagram where the YAM cluster will be located. You have a node manager. Okay, like the node manager will be there in all the data nodes, and there will be only one resource manager, and typically it will be running one of the master nodes. Okay. So there is a client, and the client has uh, requested. Okay, I think this will be better, right? And client has uh, client has submitted an application called my app. Okay, like so, I have submitted an application to the cluster. Next one, a resource manager, and client will also supply what kind of a application it is. So if it is a map reduce or whatever, it is. okay, like so, and then resource manager. It uses one of the container available in this node, available in this node manager, and then invoke an application master in that container. Okay. Then application master requests the resources to the resource manager. So here in this example, application master requested, "Hey resource manager, I need two containers to process my application." Then resource manager has given, oh, take this one container in the node manager 2 and take one container in node manager 4. So that's why the two containers have been allocated for that application. Then application master, of course, it, it runs whether it is a mapper required or a digger required or whatever the, whatever the processing is required in that two containers. Okay. Um, from this time, from this onwards, application master manages that. So, like the completion of that uh, task in that containers. Okay. And once it is done, then, then application master really it will inform back to the resource manager by saying that it's got completed. I don't have that in the flow, but that what it that what it happens. Uh, suppose. You submitted another application, okay, like called your app instead of my uh, first app is called my app, and now I am submitting another application called your app. And here, the resource manager, it's it the flow is same. It starts application master related to the your app, whether it can be a Spark, HBase, MapReduce, Stage, or whatever it is. Okay, it starts in one of the containers in the node manager. 
okay and then application master request the resources okay resource request and then resource manager produces the containers so here the container is available in the node manager one and second container is available in the node manager three okay then application master process them and then again back once it's been completed the containers will be given back to the resource manager so that is the flow We will see that now the purpose of the resource manager and what are the functionality of the resource manager. Uh, everything, all the high level. So it manages the nodes um, whenever a new node has been added. So resource manager updates the list of the containers available, list of the container, which other things are, uh, what is the memory, total memory of that node and all that kind of a things. Also, it receives the heartbeats from this node managers. So every 10 minutes, I think, node manager will always send out a heartbeat messages to the resource manager. It will simply tell that, oh, I have total capacity of 40 containers and uh, uh, two containers are uh, available right now and 38 containers have been processing, something like that. So it always send that heartbeat message. So with that heartbeat message, resource manager knows that uh, which resources are empty, which resources are working, which resources are ideal, like that. Um, the second purpose of the resource manager or function of the resource manager is well, ma it manages the containers. So that means it handles application master request to the resources. So application master may request, I need 30. So if we are only five are available, it will allocate the five and then it will wait for the availability of the rest of the source, rest of the containers. And then whenever they are available, then it will try to allocate that one to the application master, like that. And whenever some containers have been expired, okay, like then the uh, resource manager will deallocate them to the needed ones, okay. Uh, also, it follows the, some scheduler while allocating the, containers, this resource manager will follow some of the scheduler or hierarchical hierarchical rules. So what is the priority that you've been set? So if I'm a, a Hadoop admin, uh, if I'm a Hadoop admin and if I'm a manager, okay, like I need to get high priority when allocating the containers, when allocating the resources, right? And the, these are all related to containers. Next one, it manages the application masters. So it invokes the application master and also um, it will deallocate the container allocated for the application master as well. So both of them. Uh, it manages the security as well. Okay, like so when you have, I mean security in the sense like uh, I'm a user, Kiran, so I'm not.